Content creation gear is expensive, especially when you're just starting out. So in this video, we'll be revealing five essential items for 50 quid or less. Hey up peeps, we are the Mental Health Movie Makers, I am Moobit, and it's time to talk about gear. Filmmaking and content creation can be an expensive hobby and career, especially when you're bombarded every day by YouTubers shilling the latest and greatest gear, guaranteed to extend your abilities. But it really does have to be that way. So I've come up with a list of five essential items that we use literally every day on set, whether that be a movie set or here in the studio making content for you lot. And best of all, it's relatively cheap. So it's perfect for any of you, you know, starting out on, or any frugal peeps who are just trying to keep your budgets down. Good lighting is one of the only investments that can come along with you as you progress your career. But if you're just starting out, the choice and the various price ranges and all the various companies can be a little bit daunting. If you're live streaming via Twitch or via a webcam, you're probably not going to have an expensive LED screens and, and green screens like I've got here at first. So a pair of these cheap USB ring lights, you know, like these like from B&M or Amazon, will probably suffice. They're about a fiver and they're readily available. Some are better than others. You know, your miles may vary. Now, your mid-range cheapness comes via the Loom Cube or the small rig LED light 3405. Seriously, who names these bloody things? These things start at £30 depending on how many accessories you get in the, in the package. They've got little magnets on the front so you can, you know, so you can, you know, put different effects on and you can put, or you can put diffusion on like that. Or if you then upgrade to using your phone or a real camera, you know, to film yourself, then you can upgrade to a cheap panel light like this one from, I think it's from Niwa, yeah, it's the Niwa uh, T100, and they're about £45, and they run on a power source that I'll be mentioning later. And an honourable mention comes from these Spiffy Gear KU6 snap bracelets, remember these from the 90s, we use them on set all the time, we, um, like, like I'm just doing here, Behind the scenes, you know, behind all the all the film set stuff, you know, you're setting your camera up and it's usually dark because obviously they've got to make sure there's no light bleeding onto the set. Um, so having these on, on your wrist, you can kind of see what you're doing and, you know, look around. And uh, when I'm building stuff, I have this on my wrist and it just lights the camera when I'm building the cinema cams and stuff. So they are very handy. And like you say, you can just buy one at first. And if you like them, you can obviously go for the free packs and all that kind of a thing. <laughs> Is as important as the image? A good mic can make or break your content. From my many years of experience, this is one area, guys, where the phrase pay cheap, pay twice actually applies. Um, so the options at the £50 mark are a little limited, but again, if you're just starting out or, you know, it's a cost of living, then there are some options. So I'd recommend this, the Rode Video Micro Shotgun Mic. Um, that's currently £40. Um, we still use these every day on, on set for what we call scratch audio so if we're using external lavalier mics like i'm now using on this um you know you can you can sync them up in post or if you're using your phone you could get this the rode video mic me for the same price and it comes with usb-c here for those who've got usb-c phones and it also comes with a 3.5 mil headphone jack instead of the usb-c here and you know, it also comes with, both of those mics come with a, what they call a dead cat. So if you're outside in the wind, you, you won't hear the wind. Now, regarding this one, I would personally recommend using the headphone jack if you have that option on your phones, because I've found this USB-C version to not be quite as robust. It, um, it you can get, you know, your phone, if it's your phone's in your pocket, you get a bit of lint in the USB-C uh, port. And I found on a couple of shoots where I, I plugged, I thought it was plugged in and it's been like a millimeter out and it's just, ruin the entire shot i've had to reshoot it because it's not picked it's not actually you know registered and picked up there's a microphone in the phone whereas the trs jack the headphone jack if you will um they're a bit more robust they actually click in and you know it's it's a bit more reliable so if you've got a headphone jack uh use that if you can Now, there's no point having all that gear if you can't really charge the thing. Um, so for general purpose that'll last years, um, I'd recommend these things. These are MPF style batteries. Uh, there's a big version and there's a small version and there's one in the middle. Um, they're really cheap. 
um, and they're pretty much the prosumer gear standard these days. Uh, they can power lights, they can cam power cameras, they can power microphones, monitors, like pretty much everything. And you can buy an entry level kit with uh, two MPF batteries and a charger for about £40 on Amazon. After which you can buy like the larger size ones like this for the same cost, you know, like two of these for the same cost as that, uh, two, two feed ones and a charger. Um, another thing that's not on the 50 for 50 list because it costs about 80 pounds is this new technology here, which I am in love with. This is Ugreen, uh, a GAN charger. This is, I mean, it's heavy and it's big, but this does ridiculously fast charging. It's got this one, this one's got two USB C's and one USB A out. Um, and yeah, if you're running like like we do a lot of run and gone, you know, on, on location and things. So this will power your laptop, your cinema camera and charge, you know, any dead batteries at the same time. It is brilliant. But again, you know, it's out of this list, but it's more of an honorable mention, if you will. You know, if you've got the budget, um, ditch that phone charger that comes in the box and uh, use this. Don't have a phone tripod? Clamp! Need to mount your lights to a hard to reach area? Clamp! At a wedding venue and you can't have, you know, professional light stands because some drunk in Egypt might trip over them? Clamp that shit! And I'm in the gear, not the Egypt, although actually that would help as well, let's face it. The second most thing in our studios are these, the small rig clamps. Cannot recommend these enough. They come with claw things, they come with ball head things, they come with what they call magic arms, which is basically long sticks with a tripod thread on the end. They come, you know, you can stick mobile phone um, in them and use that as a tripod, you know, put a clamp there with a mobile phone thing there, you know, and uh, stick it up and then you, you've, you've got a tripod, you don't have to have an expensive tripod. Um, it, they just solve so many problems in the world. And before we get to the number one spot, I'm going to give you some honourable mentions of, of gear that I guess I get asked about a lot on this channel, but you don't actually need, but they're kind of nice to have, if that makes sense. And first up, phone gimbals. I get asked about this a lot because I'm a gimbal operator in real life, and even though I am an operator and I love gimbals, I'm in the camp of, you know, these days phone gimbals are kind of not needed because the in-phone software stabilization is, is pretty good um, on the last two, two or three generations of phone. In fact, I actually now use um, this, rather than use the phone gimbal, I've got this cage that I put my phone in and then it lets me put like filters on the front and things um, and just walking along and the in, you know, the, the software stabilization makes it look like it's on a gimbal anyway. But if you really have to have a phone gimbal, maybe you haven't got in body stabilization, I would go for a Zayun. Um, I think they're the best bang for the buck. And this on the sec is £50 in the second hand market. It is the Zion Smooth Q2. Just be aware that if you've got a massive phone like I've got, well, I'm using it for a monitor, but I've, I've got a Samsung um, S23 Ultra. Um, it's going to be far too big and heavy to fit in this thing. Uh, but if you've got like a normal phone, like you know, like the Samsung S series or, you know, a normal sized iPhone, this will do you. It's quick to set up. You can, you know, uh, you can either, you know, balance it yourself or you can put it in the, you put it in this cage here um, on your phone and then it just clicks on and uh, it's ready to go. So, it, I mean, yeah, if you, for the 50 pound mark, you can't get much better than that, to be fair. And the other thing to mention, if you're using an interchangeable lens camera and not your phone, there's a 50 pound lens I've got in my hand right here that I cannot recommend enough and I can't believe it's only 50 quid. This is the Helios 44M. It's an old Soviet Union lens that will just elevate your foot to the next level, guys. The, there are loads of them out on eBay. They're everywhere. Um, some are better than others, you know, because they're quite old. Some have character, but they all have like different characters, you know, so not no two lenses the same. Now, with it being a 70s lens, you will need an adapter, which is this thing at the bottom here. Um, and it just, you know, it screws on. I've got this one here. This is a um, my M42 to uh, any Sony, basically. So it's um, M42 is like a screw thread thing, like the old, the old things. But this, is, this isn't an official one. This is just Niwa, which, uh, you know, Niwa are pretty good. But you might find that, uh, you know, the lens plus the adapter, depending on which cam you've got, does take you slightly over the 50 pound limit, but it's not by too much. And hey, you might get lucky and secure the actual lens for like 20 quid or dirt cheap. So just do yourself a favor, go and find one of these things 
and thank me later in the comments. And the number one most essential item to buy and the most used thing that we have are these. ND filters! I cannot stress this enough! An ND filter is like the number one most used and most important component of a video shooting process. Whether that's, you know, on a on a phone or a DSLR, or this is this is the one, this is the one from that lens I just showed you. Uh, you know, you can put you can get like a little clamp like this from Samsung and put any old phone in there and then stick an ND filter on the front of that. Yeah, most people say, what are they? So these make your phone footage look professional and cinematic. Big buzzwords on, on YouTube as we know. Especially if you shoot outdoors a lot, you're going to need to invest in some kind of ND filter before you invest in anything else. Um, I've showed you quite a few there. The £50 mark, you're looking at variable NDs. Um, in the professional stu uh, sort of studio level, you get NDs that are either electronic on the camera itself or the like square things that you put in front of the lens. But for online content, these variable NDs are absolutely fine. There's various manufacturers out there. You put these on, and these are basically sunglasses for your lens. So you, you, you turn them, you just set your, your settings or lock them at that. And then you put one of these variable NDs, and there's two pieces of glass, and it's like two pieces of sunglasses material if you will and as they turn they go brighter or darker you see so honestly i put a video up um on my main channel um i'll, I'll link it down below um some basics about nd filters but yeah if you're gonna buy one thing before you buy anything else i've mentioned get an nd filter for whatever you've got and like you say if it's on a phone you know if you're just starting out you can literally i've got this for my phone when i can't be bothered to put in that massive cage it's just literally a bulldog clip with a little tiny variable nd filter on it so these are like 20 quid. So yeah. But do you agree with our recommendations? Do you have some of your own? Let us know in the comments as always. And thank you for supporting this production that's being made entirely by peeps diagnosed with mental health issues. And subscribe if you want to, if you're into that kind of a thing. And until next time, I've been Moobit and I'll see you at the next one. ta -ra. Hey up, I'm Rory the therapy dog. Click here to watch a video I picked out just for you! Or check out our behind the scenes channel right here! And for every subscriber we get, I get a treat! So do it! Click it! Gravy Bones!